Hey YouTube. So it's been a while since I made a video. Just uh, summer's been busy. Got an internship. Worked harder than I have in a long while. And just uh, sorry I didn't have time to make any videos. Just didn't have uh, any topics to make it on. You know, just didn't make any knives. But now that school started for what a couple weeks now, I had some time just to uh, crank a knife out. And uh, without further ado, here it is. So the blade's a little unfinished still. You can see all the grind lines. Uh, getting decent on the grinds, you can see it comes up a little higher there, but not bad. This is real thin stock. Uh, I think this is, what is it, at 1 16th or maybe an eighth of an inch stock, something like that. It's really easy to work with. Uh, Got to be careful on the heat treat. Uh, just doing it at a uh, homemade furnace, it kind of, uh, it's easy to bend. And I actually did bend, I had to pound this one out straight, but see if I can get this. You can kind of see that it tilts over to the right a little bit, so it's not perfect. But uh, I handed this to a few friends and nobody even noticed. It's more of a maker's thing, you know. You don't really know unless uh, you make the thing. Um, I've really just fallen in love with doing wood handles. Uh, you can see how beautiful they are right there. I don't know if uh, the camera picks it up, but there's a really, like, just... <sighs> there's just a really great reflection to it. And just, like, beautiful depth in the color. You can kind of see that there. And just how that looks. And just the finishing. I'm just messing around with some lighting right now, so... I don't know if it's better or worse. Probably better than the yellow light I had in the bathroom in some other videos. Just... Maybe a better color representation here. But yeah, so basically I took this part out just uh, for a pinch grip. So this is kind of more like a kitchen knife kind of thing. Think about something to use in the kitchen. And uh, This design was originally made for like a lot thicker stock. See how wide the blade is, right? But the grind's only brought up here. It's hard to bring up the grind in such a thin stock. I found that I was actually taking more off the edge than actually raising the grind. So, maybe not the best idea with this thin of a stock, but maybe something for a quarter inch uh, thick blade. Man, it's late. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this might be a sixteenth or maybe three thirty seconds inch. There's no way that's, a that's an eighth of an inch. I mean, that's really thin. But, uh, yeah, so basically just real good grip. I like it. The handle's a bit wider. Uh, kind of was uh, looking at some ZT knives and, you know, kind of uh, drew some ideas from there about the handle being wider. So, two grip positions. It doesn't really matter on such a small knife, but feels real nice. Uh, shoulders rounded. Everything's all nice and shiny on this. You can really see the depth of the wood right there when the glare is not there. There we go. It's just beautiful yeah so uh, this wood actually is only just finished with some true oil it's a gun stock finish and it's quite simple actually and uh, this wood is was it I want to say Jatoba is it Jatoba wood J-A-T-O-B-A -A. and yeah so let's put that in the back there while I show the sheet Alright guys, um, so the sheath probably took me a couple hours to make, it's real rough. Uh, might make another one just because the knife looks nicer later on, but I just wanted something to carry it in, just to protect the blade. And, yeah, so, I see the locks in, everyone always does that, I don't intend to carry this upside down probably wondering what this uh, this piece of kydex is for. I was thinking, you know, instead of doing a tech lock or anything, because uh, my lock that I have, I can't actually mount um, onto kydex like this because the blade's so wide. Unless I just do one side, so maybe like three screws on one side and then the other side is just kind of left hanging. I didn't really like that idea, so I kind of came up with this. Uh, I had a spare piece of kydex from the trimmings, kind of oversized this, but it led to 
kind of a clip. So you can kind of see there, you just loop your belt through there, and you just press it, and it'll lock in. So it kind of just clips in. So kind of like a built-in thing. I've seen people where they mold a Kydex to, uh, into like a clip like this, and then they'll just, uh, so if it's just like this, you just screw this side into your thing, and then you just have a belt clip here. Uh, that works fine and all, but I mean, you can just pull your knife out from this side. So I wanted something that locked, so then through some tinkering, just basically have uh, this design where it's just kind of uh, a shallow U. Sorry, while well, I try to figure it out. So you see how that kind of hooks in? And you know, just push it in. And there you go. So, sheath for this knife. I have no idea what I'm going to call this thing. But yeah. My latest and, I wouldn't say greatest, but just latest knife. So we'll leave that in the background. Uh, some other things that I've been up to, um, like I said, I really fall in love with the wood. It, what really actually killed me about the G10 and the carbon fiber stuff was just when I worked with it, I was itchy and I didn't like it. I reacted quite a bit and I couldn't stand it. Call me a wuss. I like working with the woods better, even though it kind of smells when you work with it, when you grind it down. Uh, but I'd much prefer that than being itchy, because at least then after I shower off, I don't smell like it. I smell like the wood anymore. So I kind of went overboard and uh, had a shipment of wood. And I have a lot of wood. Okay, that sounded wrong, but <laughs> sorry, guys. So I have a piece of Coco Bolo here. A lot of this is just like uh, turning wood. Put the sheet right there. Uh, or something, I don't know. So, Coco Bolo. Real nice uh, looking grain. I'm not sure if this is finished or not, but you could tell the ends are capped in wax just to prevent the checking. I think Tim uh, from Sugar Creek Forge told me a bit about that. And just seeing it here uh, kind of confirms that it's what most people do. But I don't think there's a finish on this, but you can tell how oily it is. And just how, yeah, like, I mean, scratching it, nothing comes off. And, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. Especially once you finish it up, all the grain patterns look so much clearer and beautiful. You know what, I know what I can do. So I have a piece of, what is it, where is it? Paduk, right? So, I first saw this wood on Kylie's channel and thought, oh wow, that looks, that looks okay, right? But then after you finish it, you can really see the difference. You see how, I don't know, I don't want to sound cheesy, but how bright it looks and how much depth there is in the wood. And, you know, it's just something uh, more artsy and something that G10 doesn't do for me, you know. So this was that Skinner I made quite a while back. You can see that I'm shooting on my Samsung S3. Yeah, so just brass pins pinned into two pieces of wood. You can see the difference between the Paduk. Paduk? I don't know. You guys will probably correct me. Yeah. And also, uh, another comparison for another wood I've worked with. Uh, I think I labeled this wrong. It says Jatoba on it, but I don't think this is Jatoba. I think this is Bubinga. So you can kind of see uh, some of the colors there. You can see kind of the lighter brown and the darker brown. This is the boring part, guys. I just wanted to show the knife, but I figured if, since I have all the wood out that I'd show you guys what I have. So, and here is it finished. So you can kind of see, you can kind of see up here, the darker and the light, lighter streaks. But once you finish it, you can really see the differences here. You see how it's darker here, it's lighter, and you can kind of see the grain pattern and all that. And just when you finish wood properly, it looks so beautiful. <sighs> yeah. So just. Uh, really on a wood craze right now. I've bought so much. Like this, 
So basically, I've seen most knife scales, the dimensions would be one by one and a half by five inches. And this piece here is a lot more than that. So this knife handles about maybe three inches. Let's just get rid of this. You can see kind of, uh, you can fit one, two, three lengthwise, and one, two, hold on, can't count, one, two, and a half, or the majority of it. And you, this is probably maybe, I don't know, maybe eight knife scales, eight pairs. And this piece was, oh, I, I, yeah, this one came in a set. I have this one, I labeled these wrong with duct tape, duct masking tape. So these two together was 10 bucks. And I mean, it's so big, it won't even fit on the camera. Move this knife out of the way. It's 10 bucks. And that's a size comparison right there. And that's more, that's, that's a heck of a deal for a beautiful knife handle material. And I know a lot of the tactical guys say, oh, wood, uh, not good, rots, whatever. I think if you finish it and you just wipe it off when you're done, it'll, it'll I've never had any problems with it. And I have used these knives uh, and carried them, not extensively, just in my pocket. And yeah. So, what else do I have here? I have something called Red Nara. Right there, you can see how it's spelled. Oh, I taped over the nicest looking part, of course. Just reposition that. But, I mean, look at that. You have just beautiful. I think this might have something on. There's no way that it could be that. I don't know. I've heard some woods are pretty oily and they look finished without anything. But, I mean, there's something on there. There has to be. That can't be a natural finish. But you can kind of see, uh, I think this is called like the burl. You can see like bird's eyes, I think, or something or another. You can just see the depth of color. You can see how well it reflects there. And this is even finished, guys. Like, they just took a saw and they just coated this. And it looks this good. Once you polish this up and stick it on your knife, it's beautiful. And actually, let me leave this out for kind of like a size comparison. So, about three inch knife handle. So, like, this is plenty of wood. And this is maybe only like eight bucks or so for this block. And what else do I have here? I have camphor burl. And my girlfriend actually, when she first saw this, said, oh, it looks like chicken pox, you know. Now everyone's going to think this is disgusting. But before I, she said that, I thought this was a beautiful piece. I mean, it's unique to have, like, those red spots there in your wood. I'm sure it'll look a lot better once it's on a handle. And it's, uh, the depth is brought out. Or here. I think this knife shows it better than the other. So in this instance you could kind of see let me see if I can get the lighting right. Oh, sorry guys. So you can see how the grains brought out by the contouring of your handle. Because this is just going straight normally, but since you have a curve here, you can see how it follows the contours. Just like how G ten when you uh contour it or uh, was it multicolor G10 when you do like an Anzo pattern and everything you see how it brings out like patterns the same goes for wood you know and I'm sure once this is patterned you know with all these swirls and everything probably be pretty crazy so that's the name camphor burl that's an A sorry for my crap handwriting and a burl wood again sealed with wax uh, I got all this wood from a place on a website called Gilmer Woods, uh, G I L M E R Woods dot com, uh, and they just have great prices. I mean, I was buying scales on eBay. If you guys look a few videos back, uh, basically twenty bucks for a set of eight, 
and that's like maybe two bucks a pair and just uh, I mean like eight bucks buys you this on this website and that's I know you have to cut it yourself but if you have a bandsaw or a friend with a bandsaw or access to a machine shop this you'll basically be making knives for the rest of your life maybe not the rest of your life depends how many you make but uh, yeah it's a lot cheaper this way I feel and I mean you have a lot of you have a lot more freedom to cut the wood because let's say for this giant piece of paduk I can cut it here sorry battery's dying on the phone this piece of paduk right I can have this and just uh, plane it this way and I could have just these nice striations but if I wanted something more plain I could just cut it this way because the grains flowing this way right so you just take off a layer and you won't see the grain at all or if you want a lot of detail let me show the other side you can have this and you could just have oh, I don't know if you can see that I need more space out I didn't think these pieces would be that big but you can see how the curve in the grain right you could just cut your block this way and then you'll have plenty of uh, detail in your handle so really you have a lot more range about how you want to cut your wood and you could get different details based on what or how big your block is. I'm sure something this size is a lot more limited because you can't cut it this way because then your knife will no longer fit. I'm kind of stuck either cutting it like this or like this. So since this is a burl wood there's not much like grain direction so it doesn't really matter. But for some of the smaller blocks you might not have so much of a choice. Uh, this is an interesting piece that I got. Man, you, you guys don't even know how much wood I bought. I'll tell you how much I got in then. I'll show you like a shot. Uh, I'm kind of racing the clock because the battery's dying. But I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. Uh, but this is a North American wood, I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. And it's just kind of like the Badook, except it's uh, in real life it's more of a pinkish, reddish kind of color. I don't know if you guys can tell. Like right there is probably a good representation. It's actually... A lighter spot on there but and just with uh, a brownish streak right there a little bit plain compared to the others that I've shown but yeah and then oh I showed this earlier some tambuti and just uh, how beautiful this is look at that to see the grain here I mean once you cut a pattern into there into your knife like for a finger choil or for the rounding of your of the scale I mean it's gonna be beautiful and you can see um, I'm not too sure why but there's a second type of wood connected onto it maybe just like a different layer and uh, I mean this is just as hard like I can't scratch it with my nail and this side I definitely can't scratch it with my nail so you can see some of the natural grain in there as well so just uh, I guess this would be the equivalent of a two-tone G10 not two-tone in the fact like they're side by side but like layered on top of each other and when you uh, contour it you can show like either the white or this golden brown depending on how deep you want to go sorry some of my uh, camera stands showing there my ghetto camera stand yeah so tambuti I'm probably pronouncing that wrong and then just because uh, of historical significance, we have some olive wood from an olive tree. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is from the Middle East. So, just some beautiful tight grain there. And again, once you cut a pattern in there, it looks amazing. What else do I have? Satin wood. This one uh, was recommended to me because. I don't know if you guys can tell at all, but in real life you can see uh, just different layers of this shine. Let me see if I can get that on camera. Uh, not really, but just, uh, okay, you can kind of see it there. You see how this layer here reflects more so than this layer, and just at different angles it does different things, you know. So a little plain, but uh, I think once finished this will really just... And then some rosewood from Guatemala. Uh, also a bit more plain, but I mean, just a dark, rich color. 
A lot of these things you can't really tell till it's finished. Um, yeah, so probably gonna go check out some band saws and see what what's going on there. All right, this one's more interesting. So some of them were sold in like a bundle. So these will be like uh, tied together, and you'll just buy a bundle. And this I think was somewhere around six bucks for this. This is more of a high-end wood kind of see. Like pattern. I mean, if you think about it, like what kind of tree grows like this? Well, I'm sure some tree does because you have it here. You can see a white layer here and black layer. And I mean, get creative. You can choose what you want in your knife. This could be the back of your knife, and you could just cut it out over here. Or if you don't like the white, you can just have the back of your knife here and just cut out your handle like that, and you'll be fine. So, to me, G10 is just kind of plain, and this kind of adds another, um, I don't know, aspect of knife making. See the real tight grain there, it looks beautiful. So I think this is called Kingwood. This is either Kingwood or Zircote, Zircote, I'm not too sure, um, don't remember. The website, uh, after I purchased it, took out all my uh, shopping cart and I couldn't get it back and uh, just had a list of SK of SKU, SKU numbers, SKU, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know, you guys can't talk back, but um, SKU numbers that uh, had a list and no links to any of the photos. And this is Zer Zercote, you can kind of tell this has that weird grain pattern. I actually like this a lot, that's why I got so many pieces of this. A bit more expensive wood, but you can see this also has that uh, reflectiveness that's really pretty, like the satin wood. I'm sure a lot of these woods have it. I mean, it's just not finished. So I think this was originally a turning block. So basically, a lot of people will stick this on a wood lathe and they'll just spin it and they'll make like a pen out of it or cup or bowl. Well, not of this size, but something bigger. All right, almost done. This is called Madrone. So what I ended up doing is I had to actually go back and punch in the SKU into the website. But then, unfortunately, uh, if the lot was gone, you, they, they removed it. So some of them, so like that Kingwood or Zircote or whatever, I wasn't too sure of. Uh, they removed that shortly after I purchased it because that was the last one in the lot. A lot of these other ones, they still had others in the lot, so they kind of left the photo up. So I was able to identify it. So this is my drone. And it's also kind of a burl. Really beautiful. It's real nice. The website, uh, Gilmer Woods, uh, kind of gives like a history and a brief, like, for your information about the wood. And this is kind of neat knowing the history of where this came from and what it's known for. So you can see there, I mean, if you cut your knife scale out like this, you'll just have plenty of action. And you can see how tight grain that is. Uh, I'm kind of nervous about cutting this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a bandsaw to, uh, I think, plank these out. Lastly, this is for my mom. Um, walnut. I think this is probably one of the few domestic pieces that I got. Uh, and you can just see that. Really beautiful. Of course, uh, with any natural building material, you have defects, right? You can see a crack there. Uh, I've read online and I think Tim also mentioned in the build along you could just uh, fill that in with super glue. I'm not focusing. And you should be fine. I mean, a lot of these defects you can fix. It's just uh, I'm doing it. So you can see on the other side of that knot, you kind of have that. So I'm kind of nervous when I'm going to put this through the band, so I'll see if it catches on that knot or if it just goes through it, no problem at all. We'll see. I'll try to make a video after I plank these out and make them into scales. I don't know, I'm going to guess, I'm going to get 40 to maybe 80 scales out of all the wood here. I mean, again, the size comparison, look at this. This is tiny compared to this block of wood. I mean, it doesn't even fit on the camera. Let me back that up, see if I, yeah, I can. I'm just exaggerating. But that is a lot of wood for how many knives you can make. Even the bigger handles, like uh, this one that I made. This is also a rosewood, by the way. So this is rosewood finished. I have some gunk on there because I was using this, so maybe the side's nicer. You just kind of see 
how nice the wood is. I mean, even that, you'll probably get three handles going this way. And then you'll have maybe another handle going back. So maybe about four knife scales of this size coming out of this. And, yeah. And don't get me wrong, the shipping on this was kind of crazy. I mean, the shipping weight of all this wood was, I think, $30. I mean that's crazy in shipping. I'm, I don't know. For me that is. And uh, my ghetto uh, stand on my Dremel Multi Max, two Bibles. So I mean, look at that. I mean, there's so much wood here. No pun intended. Uh, sorry guys, gonna go freehand for a while. Uh, the eBay lots are also fairly good. I mean, some of them you could get a good deal, but some of the nicer pieces, I mean, people go bonkers about. I've seen scales go for $30 on eBay. I mean, just one set of 1 by 1.5 by 5 inch. But, I mean, look at this. You have a huge amount of wood here. So I'm going to guess maybe 80-ish scales. I mean, this piece here, I mean, conservatively, maybe 8 pairs already and so on and so on so I paid oh there's one downside of that Gilmer's wood website you have to buy over a hundred dollars so you can see that's why I have so much uh, I spent maybe about 150 on all this stuff uh, I don't expect to buy any handle material stuff for a while so yeah that is messy but I mean 